Hello, welcome back. I'm tired. I'm really tired. Uh, I'm recording this on the weekend and this is my time off when I'm doing this and yeah. Hello burnout. One of the problems with creative endeavours like YouTube videos or my regular job which is artwork is you reach a point where your brain is just worn out and it's caught up with me this weekend. I'm glad it's the weekend it's caught up with me, it makes life a bit easier. I can take some time off to deal with it without getting in the way of work. The issue I'm having is just getting things done. The end of the month is always the busiest period for me, particularly the last week, and a few things have ganged up on me. Namely, the maestro, um, spoiler alerts, the rear arch, one of them, um, kind of fell off a bit. So I've been having to weld the new one back on. This is a job I was expecting to do, it's something that has been planned. It just, yeah. I thought I'd set the time aside for it properly and then my welder broke and now the weather's turned so even if my welder wasn't broken I wouldn't be able to weld because I have to work outdoors. So that's a bit frustrating, it means my one operational car I can't use until I finish that job because obviously I can't drive around with jagged bits of metal sticking off the side of the car. The princess is waiting on me having the motivation to deal with that job, it's not particularly difficult, I just need the right headspace and progress on the Lanchester just at the minute is being thwarted by the weather and Pat and I's work schedules. His hours have been moving around a lot. Mine haven't, but I work nights because of international customers. So it's been tricky to deal with those and it's been a bit stressful trying to find the time and the headspace together to do that. When it comes to other projects, which we'll come to in a bit in this video, I'm kind of having a similar problem. I've finished quite a few projects lately and I've just started some new ones but I'm just having trouble getting that clarity in my head. So I'll, I'll tell you what, we'll go and have a look at some of these projects first rather than you listening to me ramble on. Uh, I'm going to deal with the clothing stuff first. Most of that is kind of just about ready to start now. So let's go into that. Made some small progress on the red coat from last time. As you'll remember, the thing that was holding me up was fabric because I was struggling to find a match for this velvet, which is sort of a, it's a very odd colour. It looks red until you put something red next to it and then it doesn't look red. But I got very lucky and I found a single curtain which is being sold as a door curtain and the colour is so close that you'd think it was the same fabric. It's not. If you get really, really close, you can see they are slightly different. This velvet is a bit more fine than this one. It's a little bit more coarse. But honestly, I'm just delighted I've finally found one that matches. So I can make some proper progress on this. I can actually cut out these purpley panels in the proper fabric. The thing I haven't found yet is some decent lining material. So that's the next thing I'm hunting for. Those red trousers I'd made, unfortunately, I can't save them as trousers. I'll be repurposing the wool for something else. So I had a look online to see if I could find some replacement fabric. I wanted something fairly bright and I wanted something at least wool rich. And I found this and it's a super fine worsted, which is just to do with how it's made. It's fairly soft, it's not too scratchy, and most importantly, I remember to pre-wash it and it didn't shrink. So I am going to be doing another trouser video. It will be shorter than the ones I've done before because I'm going to be focusing on how I'm going to fix the pattern. I now know what's wrong with the pattern, at least for me, and through the assistance of other channels like The Closet Historian, do go and check her channel out. I'll put a link on the screen and 
down below in the description. Uh, I'm, I'm going to fix this and I'm going to make some more trousers and make them properly. Another thing I'm criminally short of at the moment is waistcoats. I've ordered a pattern, so once that arrives I can get stuck into that. This is the leftover wool from those trousers I made and messed up. And this combined with the fabric that's actually still in the trousers as was, I can turn into a waistcoat. The fabric at the bottom is, I think, a viscose, and it's got this sort of woven in pattern. So it's shiny where the details are and it's not where they aren't. And it's just sort of a loose florally thing. It's a good waistcoat lining type pattern. Before I moved house, I had my fabric in storage, and for some reason, I don't really understand why, all the fabrics like this, where it's like synthetic lining fabrics just sort of disintegrated. Not because of UV damage, they were kept in boxes in a dry space in the dark. They just disintegrated. And this is one of the only ones that didn't. Very odd. As you can see with a lot of the projects at the moment, they're in the getting started phase. And this is another one. I'm still trying to get more shirts together and materials and all that sort of thing. And it's, it's a bit tricky at the moment, but we're getting there. So this is a cotton rich. I don't think it's 100% cotton. I think it's a poly cotton blend. And it's a really lovely lightweight fabric. It drapes quite nicely. And this is going to become at least one shirt. I might get two out of it. It's just a fairly ordinary red and white stripe. I really love stripy fabric. It's quite difficult to find the kind of stripes I really like. I like quite bold, high contrast stripes. But this will satisfy my desire for stripes for now. So there you go, that's where we are with those. A lot of red. I, I do like red, it is my favourite colour. But usually when I'm working on clothing projects simultaneously with one another, I, I have more colour variety than that. But I guess we're doing red things. Good news on this one though, I'm, I'm happy to have finally found the fabric for that. That's been a bit of a hunt. Now I've just got to find some suitable lining fabric. I'm sure I will. So, yeah, I mean the, the clothing side of things, that serves two purposes. One is it refreshes my wardrobe, especially with, I've got quite a few older items that are wearing out now that are shop bought. So replacing those is, is quite good. You've seen this shirt for example before. Uh, if you haven't, do go and visit the playlist. You want to look for the rainbow square shirt, because that's what this is. Uh, nice easy one, this. So, yeah, the sewing stuff is, is plodding along. I'm, I'm not really having any problems with it, aside from the fact I'm still having to order things online. The other thing that I had hoped to have made a start on by now is that chest drawers I covered last time. Fact of the matter is, other things got in the way. Um, there was some housework to do, as, as in work on the house. Uh, we're getting through it. We've, we've broken the back of the projects on this house now, but uh, whenever there is something to do, it does take away a lot of the time spare that I've got for these videos. So we're dealing with that, and I do have one other woodwork project that's popped up. We have a... Um, I'll tell you what, I'll show you. Let's go over and have a look at that. This isn't one that we exactly planned on doing, but it's surplus to requirements, it's not very well built, and it has some damage. So there's not much point restoring it. And it's got, you know, the finish is shot on it, it's got marks. It doesn't matter what you do, this thing just marks really, really badly. And it's all made up of these little... Uh, here we are. It's all made up of these little finger-jointed sections and... I don't know. We're not very keen on it, but there's a lot of good wood in that for what we do want to make it into. So, watch this space on that one. It's not staying as a coffee table. There you go. wonder what that's going to be. The, uh, the shelving units I did recently... Again, visit the playlist, have a look. The... Uh, 
the shelving units turned out quite nicely. They're holding up really well, and they, I don't know, it's kind of weird. They're much bigger than the shelves they replaced, but they don't, they don't feel as oppressive in the room as those white shelves. I think it's because they just the colour makes them less obvious or something. But, uh, but yeah, I'm enjoying using those. They're very good. What else do I have on at the moment? Oh, yes. Now, there's a few things that I'm thinking of, of experimenting with, with content. And although I started the So What stuff as being just sewing, what I learned very quickly is unless you are dedicating full-time hours to it, or it's your only hobby, I can't imagine just having one hobby, then I, I can't. I can't do the sewing content. I, I can't produce enough of it quickly enough and do all the recording and editing for a regular upload schedule like I've got at the moment. So that's why other things came in like the woodwork and, and that sort of business. But I did have an interesting little find recently. I'm always on the lookout for old um, car model kits because they are, I don't know, they're just kind of satisfying to do without worrying about all the practicalities of MOTs and, you know, all the issues that the one-to-one -one scale versions give you. They also take up a lot less space and they're a lot easier to pick up. So, that's a bonus. So, let's go and show you what's been going on with that. You'll have actually seen it behind me in a couple of videos. But I, I think, let me know if you're interested in seeing more on the model kit side of things. I'm not sure how easy that's going to be to record, but we'll see. You'll have seen these behind me when I've been doing the recording and these are the model kits that I've put together. I quite like building these, the only issue I have is they do take up a lot of space. So I, I might do some more video on these someday because they're a lot of fun to build and uh, these two particularly have some interesting little details on them. But the thing I'm bringing you in for here is this old kit and this is I think think an original. I don't think it's a re-release, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. And it's a partially built one. So somebody before me way back when has actually gone together and put this all into one piece, ready for painting, and then just didn't get any further with it. There are a few bits of repair to do on it, as you would expect, but everything I need is there. So I'll be building that. It also comes with a trailer. There you go, there's the artwork for it. And that's actually fairly accurate to what you end up with. There's this weird clamshell thing going on, these massive canopies in the kit as well. And the important thing with this kit was all of these um, plastic canopies were present because they would have been very difficult for me to actually make. And, you know, they're in good shape. They'll need a polish, obviously, but other than that, all of those pieces are present because everything else pretty much I can build. There we go, that's an overview of what's going on and what projects are coming up and what I'm working on. And let me know what you think. Let me know if there's something that you'd like to see done ahead of the others and that sort of thing. Or something you'd like to see me have a go at. I'm a jack of all trades, I'll have a go at anything. Speaking of, I have been working on uh, another project. I've got a handwritten recipe book from the early 30s which belonged to my late gran and I've been going through and trying to decipher the handwriting and the fact that my gran liked to omit things from recipes that she knew she'd remember. So that, that makes some of these recipes quite interesting to read especially when there's ingredients in where you're sure it should be cooked but there's no cooking instructions. So I might bring that along to the channel in the future if that's something you'd be interested in. There's, there's quite a few recipes to work through. None of them are particularly complicated unless she submitted a lot of instructions. Um, unfortunately, obviously, I can't ask her and I didn't get the recipe book until after she died, so yeah doesn't have her famous date and walnut cake recipe in it though. I don't think I'll ever find that, which is a shame. Oh well. 
Anyway, take care out there, and if you're suffering from a bit of burnout, try and make some time for yourself. And I, I know, if you're anything like me, sitting on your hands and doing nothing seems like the biggest waste of time ever, but trust me, it does you good. Sometimes being bored and sitting on your bum and doing nout, it's the best thing you can do. Especially if you've got a lot on. So, yeah, especially these days, take care of yourself. And hopefully, I'll see you next time. Bye for now.